I'm Dave Sanders. Um, I'm the director of the one year MBA program at St. Louis University. Um, I'm a member of the economics faculty here, so I also teach in the program. Um, kind of the role that I take on is, is I handle kind of the day to day uh, running of the, the program. You know, I, I don't insert myself into all of the classes or into the into the faculty's teaching style or anything like that. But um, I kind of handle the, you know, everything to make sure the program runs smoothly from scheduling to make sure that we have textbook lists out, um, setting up Excel certification testing. Um, and as well as even kind of getting to know the students. That process starts really early on. Um, I, I don't want to say that I'm involved in 100% of the interviews because some of them I just can't make schedule wise, but 95% of the, um, the application interviews I'm going to be involved in. So I'm meeting the students right away. Um, and, and really I'm using that opportunity to, to, of course, learn about the student, but then to make sure that that we're gonna have a, a good fit within our program. We want our students, because it is so accelerated, to be able to work with, learn from, um, and, and really get something out of the experience of being with each other in the program. Um, so I'm gonna be involved with the students right away. That continues throughout the program. Um, I usually teach pretty early in the program. In fact, uh, for the current cohort, I'm actually already already done. Um, so, uh, but I still will stay involved with them throughout the summer. Um, I do, you know, kind of check ins with them. I'll do little newsletters, even things like setting up events for our students um, to try to, uh, again, kind of be able to engage each other as a networking opportunity or as just uh, an opportunity to. Um, enjoy themselves, relieve stress, whatever. Um, so I, I try to kind of be involved in a lot of that kind of component as well. So I think kind of we take our approach based on really from the business world. Um, you know, business decisions are not made in isolation. Um, if you're in an accounting department, you don't make a decision based only on your knowledge of accounting. Um, you're gonna, you know, bring into that, you know, your knowledge of, of finance. You're gonna bring into that, you know, the data elements, the corporate cost. Um, but then you're also gonna probably bring in some of those psychological elements, um, you know, maybe some of those econ concepts, those management concepts. Um, and, and we really kind of try to take that approach into the classroom. Um, you know, if you go back 20 years, a, a typical MBA program was, was theory on a blackboard, on a chalkboard. Um, we really try to, to bring more of a real life perspective. So um, we know that in real life, those decisions are made using multiple fields. So we wanna simulate that in our classroom. Um, so, you know, for example, we have courses that combine finance and accounting, um, as well as risk management. Um, we have international business courses that are looking at, at multiple components of international business at once. Um, we have courses that combine marketing with econ um, because we, we feel that, you know, we really want to simulate that that real life, that real world kind of situation. And um, it's important to, that students get that opportunity to bring in multiple disciplines into one course. Um, we have, you know, we, 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 we typically try, try to kind of con constrain it to some, you know, manageable amount, but uh, we really try in, in, in the majority of our coursework to get two or three perspectives um, within that course. Um, so sometimes that means multiple faculty coming in from multiple disciplines um, as well, and then trying to tie that material together. The first element of that, definitely the faculty are very engaging um, with each other, with the students, with, with me. Um, you know, we, we, we are really lucky that we have the business school is very self-contained. Um, it, it has two buildings, uh, but it's all one building. They're, they're connected. So, um, you know, I, I sit out at my office and I have a, a shared office with um, a professor who teaches in finance and he also teaches in our MBA program. And there's, I mean, numerous times where um, it's just kind of yelling across the wall, uh, you know, hey, what are what are you doing in this element? Um, uh, or even just right across the hall, we have um, another uh, one of our marketing faculty. So we're all very close. Um, we're all, you know, a, a close knit group anyway. Um, and we really try to engage each other quite frequently within uh, the planning stages of the program, um, even just through, you know, kind of the design of coursework. Um, we also do have some vertical integration within the program. Um, so some stepping of material, um, you know, if I think about like where we're at right now in the summer, we have um, my course, which kind of introduces them to some of the basic concepts of Excel, some basic correlation modeling, um, a lot of level one skills, and then even Excel and regression. Um, well, that's going to tie to one of their courses later on in the program where they do some more of the analytic works in aggression. They expand beyond Excel into R. 
Um, it also kind of combines with some of the, the more complex Excel that they're now getting in their data prep course. So, I mean, so we do kind of make sure that those skills kind of prerequisite each other, um, that, that they are building on each other cont continuously throughout the program. We really still take that holistic approach to management, you know, uh, to that kind of that education. So students are going to get a lot of those different di business disciplines. So the core elements uh, of business are all going to be be uh, captured. You're going to have accounting and finance and econ and and management. And uh, but then we're also going to expand onto that and into those other courses where we will have um, more of an analytic approach. Um, and we, we really actually try to tie analytics into a lot of our coursework. So there are. Um, courses on advanced analytics. There is a course on data visualization and Tableau. Um, there is a course on um, business decision making, um, operations management, digital marketing. Uh, so we have quite a few uh, of these kind of these core elements captured in, into our model, but we're always really thinking about the analytical approach. So in the digital marketing for class, for example, they use um, SPSS to really uh, really delve into market characteristics. Um, even in my economics course, like I said, I'm using regression analysis right away front up front in the program to to impact you know decision making. Um, so we're going to kind of tie that into as many courses as we possibly can. Um, we also have you know um, some ethics built into the program. We are a, a Jesuit institution and we really hold to those Jesuit roots. Um, so we look at ethics as part of that holistic education. We want people to be making, you know, management decisions that that, that really are are grounded and based in that that Jesuit belief. Um, I think that you know th that that really kind of comes from what companies are looking for. You know, um, you know, I, I think that our our program has to be ever evolving. You know, we, we are all we're, we're never looking to stand pat. We're always looking to change to to you know, to add in a little bit. So we're very frequently going to companies and saying, well, what do you want? And companies are saying, hey, we want a lot of uh, analytics because, you know, again, you think about what's changed in 20 years, uh, the amount of data available to companies at all times. And they don't have a lot of people that can work with and utilize that data. So um, that's one of the things they're looking for. They want people who can work in R and Python and Excel and utilize that data, but they also want people who are still tied into that decision-making process, um, understanding personnel and how those decisions are gonna impact their personnel. So we really try to capture that all into our program. It's, it's you know, again, where we get our, our importance for data analytics, but we don't want to um, move away from the traditional skills either. So we wanna make sure that they're all incorporated together. We're very diverse in our backgrounds. Um, of course, I just kind of think in general, um, having strong quantitative ability is, is going to be very helpful. Um, you know, uh, uh, having uh, an ability to look at and understand statistics is going to be very helpful. But one of the things that I think is so great about our, our, our program is that we do have a very diverse set of students. Um, we have students, for example, who um, maybe are in the law program here at St. Louis University. Um, so they don't have as much business or, or quantitative background, but while they're in law school, they have decided that, you know, corporate law is going to be something of interest or tax law might be of interest. Uh, there, there are people out there who like that. Um, and uh, well, what that means is, is that they need to enhance their business background as well um, if they're going to go into corporate law. So we have students along that field. We have a lot of students in the medical field. Um, St. Louis University um, also has a hospital. Um, campus as well. So we have a lot of people who whose background may be in biology um, uh, or, or in some other medical discipline and hospital administration is now not just run by doctors. You have to have someone who has uh, business acumen as well. So we are seeing a lot of students who are going through programs and health administration come into um, the MBA program as well. We, of course, get our business professionals. Those are going to be the ones that maybe have maybe have a business background or, or a business undergrad degree or, or maybe not, but have, you know, that five, six, seven years of experience and are now looking for an MBA. So I think that we're going to have a really kind of wide range of backgrounds. And I actually think that's uh, I think that's great because, you know, I, there's been a lot of, of research, a lot of evidence that that shows that, you know, if you kind of take a group and have them make a decision, the group that has more diversity is going to get to a more efficient decision more quickly. 
um, than, than putting, you know, five finance people together. Um, you know, they're going to get to that different decision making. So I think that gives our students the opportunity to learn from each other, um, which I think is important. You know, of course, we want students learning from faculty. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the, the basis of, of any educational program. But we want our students learning from each other as well. Um, we want them to be able to bring their backgrounds in. So maybe maybe they have a big finance problem and, and the students in finance and accounting can really work through that. But maybe they're having difficulty presenting that. And that's maybe where our JD students come in. They're really good at, at, at discussing, arguing, talking, you know, and presenting. And, um, and or maybe that's where you have a, a student who's maybe got the psychology background come in. Um, and really kind of, again, open up in, in a completely new way of thinking. And that I think is very crucial to our students. So yes, there's some background skills that I, I think help, right? You know, those quantitative skills are definitely gonna be helpful, but that is not what we're always looking for. Um, you know, that's why I take part in these interviews, you know, in, in, in the student interviews for, for admission, because again, I'm looking for personalities. I want personalities they are gonna be able to learn from each other. Um, it, it's an underutilized resource, I think, in education is that ability to learn from your peers. We, we definitely think that our analytic skills are gonna be, um, be very much in demand. Um, so all of our students going through are gonna have pretty strong Excel skills by the time they're done. They're gonna get the, um, the Excel certification, the 77727 certification test um, as part of our program. But in addition to that, uh, they're gonna be getting some of those higher level Excel skills even beyond that testing. Um, they're gonna be learning uh, to do some basic coding in R and uh, basic coding in Python. Now we're not a full on coding program. We're not gonna have you take a whole bunch of, you know, uh, computer programming courses. Um, so it's more about understanding the results. So basic coding, interpreting the results is what we're looking at. And, and like I said, R, uh, Python, um, digital marketing platform uses SPSS. Um, we utilize CapSim software to simulate business industry. Um, so you're going to have a lot of that, you know, ability to work with data, permute it into, you know, something usable, and then go a step further into the decision making process. Um, we also have um, a industry practicum, which is um, a semester long consulting um, internship, for lack of a better term, where you will be on site with the company um, or on, as on site as COVID has allowed us to be um, with the company. So you are utilizing those skills right away. These students are given raw data and, um, you know, for the first two or three weeks, weeks that's kind of kind of what they're doing is they're going through the data, they're organizing it, they're cleaning it, they're deciding on their own what is going to be useful for their project and what is not and how they need to utilize this data. And and that's real life. You know, that's what it is. And that's a, a, a skill that you don't typically teach in an educational institution. We're, we're harassed by time. So, you know, I went through and cleaned their data because I wanted to be able to do this in a hour and 15 minute lecture. Um, but, but you know, it, when they get into that practicum, that's a skill they learned that's, that's absolutely invaluable because that's gonna be something they're faced with in the business world, um, that things aren't handed to them in a pretty rubric. Uh, you know, they're gonna be having to make these decisions fast paced on their own. And I, I think that, you know, that's a, a, a really important skill. Um, we also have a variety of, of, you know, what people might call those softer skills that, that they're going to be learning. Um, we have a career resource team. Um, they go through a perfect professional effectiveness course that stems the entirety of the, the program. So each of the three semesters, they're working with their career team to develop some of these other skills as well that, you know, again, we may consider them to be, you know, the quote unquote soft skills, but these are things that, that companies find very much in demand as well. So we really try to focus again on that holistic approach to education. The skill set they're learning in our program is highly, you know, transferable to really any industry. Um, so we don't focus, we don't have just one split exit, you know, this is where they only go. Um, we have students in multiple industries, multiple parts of the country, and even multiple parts of the world. Um, the majority of our alumni probably stay in the Midwest just for kind of geographical, um, you know, that's a lot of them, that's where they're from. Um, so St. Louis, Chicago and Kansas City and, and Dallas are really big employment landing areas for our MBA graduates. Um, we have um, students working in nonprofits. We have students working in Fortune 500s. Um, we have students in Washington, D.C. We have students in Atlanta. 
um, students in Europe, students in Hong Kong. So we have alumni really that have gone the, the breast of the planet at this point. Um, you know, again, in terms of kind of what companies are these students looking for, um, you know, we, we have a, a huge list. So I'm going to try to see how many of them I can kind of remember off the, the, the top here. Um, I know we have several students at Boeing, at Nestle Purina, uh, Wells Fargo, um, KMPG, um, Common, uh, the FDIC, Centene, the Federal Reserve, um, Equifax. So, I mean, we've got you know, a, a, a lot of these are big companies, you know, a, a, that uh, um, that we're seeing our students represented by. Um, we really, again, we, we feel our students, the skills they learn are, are going to be able to kind of go wherever they want. Uh, I, I, that sounds uh, maybe may a, a, a little uh, self kind of centered in that regard, but it's something that we definitely feel that uh, our students kind of come out of our education with that ability that they're going to go into not only, you know, where they want, but, but what industry, I mean, banking, project management, um, you know, finance. So, so we have several students in all of these industries. We also, again, have a lot of those students who are seeking business as kind of a enhancement to their other career. Um, I didn't even mention all of the law offices that we have JDs working at. I, I don't even know all of them, but we have a lot of JD MBA students who are practicing corporate law um, across the country. Um, I have uh, a couple of students that I, I still maintain contact with uh, a couple of years ago that were going through that health administration. Um, one of them is working in a hospital in, in, in Denver right now. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're going into the medical industry, into the hospital administration. It's, we're really seeing a, a wide breast of, of where our students land. So this is definitely something that we're seeing as an evolution in our program. Um, over the past couple of years, we've really grown in our um, number of international students in the program from, you know, a, a small handful to this year, we have several, several international students. And I think one of the biggest things, opportunities is that we are now STEM certified. Um, so for our international students, this is going to mean that OPT extension, um, that opportunity to find somewhere to work in the United States. Um, St. Louis is a great place for international students to come because we do have that access to, again, so many Fortune 500 companies. We have the, the smaller companies, but we also have a lot of entrepreneurship um, here in St. Louis. We have an area right, uh, gosh, just down the street from campus called Cortex Innovation Community, um, where we're seeing uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurship. Um, St. Louis is the, the number one ranked uh, by LinkedIn for uh, places in the U.S. to start a career in, in 2020. Um, I think they base that on job availability, um, cost of living, salary, et cetera. So, um, so it's a great place for students to, to really kind of start off. Um, we have a really good and dedicated international student services office. Um, and, and I think that students find a lot of support, both uh, graduate and undergraduate from that office. Um, we have a variety of clubs on campus for international students to take part in also. Um, so I think that there's a lot of, of effort and time put into um, that in, in at St. Louis University. Um, we actually, just kind of as an aside, we have something called the Host Family Program. Um, I've been a part of that for, I guess, four or five years now, um, where every year um, an international student is partnered with someone in the community, whether that's a faculty member or an alumni um, or an emeritus or retired faculty member. Um, and, you know, we, we try to do some events together. Um, so I know with our it's it's been very different over the last two years, obviously. Um, but prior, you know, uh, I know my host student, we would go to a baseball game um, or we would go bowling. So like, you know, usually once a month they're planning events and then we always would try to get together one additional time a month. So whether it's, you know, just kind of going out to dinner. Um, and I think that's a lot of fun because that there are a lot of restaurants in St. Louis. So um, just about every ethnicity is kind of um, uh, accounted for. So you know, we went out to dinner with my host family student, uh, you know, a couple of times we try to find a restaurant that um, is from, you know, their their home country. And so, you know, gives us the opportunity to engage. Um, and I think that a lot of students really do enjoy that, the international students, because um, it is, I think, very challenging to be 
5,000 miles from home sometimes. And um, so it, it's nice to have uh, someone there that you can just go in and talk to, pop into my office or send an email or, you know, go grab a bite to eat. Because I think that's one of the things that our international students really, it's, it's overlooked. You know, they everything focuses on the education and we, we, which we're very proud of, you know, but there's other things that, you know, international students are faced with. They're faced with things like isolation, um, and, and that's something that we take very seriously at, at SLU. So, you know, we really try to engage our students to make them feel at home. Um, so I think that's really important. Of course, outcomes are absolutely important. And again, I think the OPT extension is, is, is great for our international students. They're gonna get a great set of skills. Um, they're gonna work with a diverse cohort. So again, they're going to be able to learn from other international learners from other parts of the world. Um, Africa, Asia, Europe are all represented in our current cohort. Um, but of course, then as well, learn about the US, you know, learn from US students also. So I think that that kind of diversity is really important. Um, I think that the value is, is really gonna be important as well, um, you know, in terms of, of relative to a lot of other nationally ranked institutions, MBA institutions, SLU's expenses are not as high. Um, both cost of living um, and tuition and being in St. Louis um, as a lot of those other schools, but our job market outcomes are great. And um, I think that that's something that's gonna be really, um, really valuable to our international students as well. Um, so, you know, you're gonna have those skills that are in demand, they're technical skills. You're gonna be able to apply them in the United States if you so choose. You're gonna be able to apply them in Europe if you so choose, in Asia if you so choose. You're going to be able to take them back to your home country if you choose as well and make your home country um, a, a stronger economy. Um, and we have a lot of students who, that's something they talk about in their their interview is, is they're real excited about the STEM certification and the OPT extension, but what are their goals? Their goals are to return to their home country and, and say, I wanna make a better life for you know my community. And, and I think that the skills that you learn um, learn here are gonna give you that op opportunity. Our business school itself is, is in the two buildings. Everyone gets to know each other really well, but then that's only a part of our campus. Um, we have a very, you know, we have a beautiful campus that people can explore. St. Louis is a great city. Um, the university is located in what we call Midtown. So we are blocks away from the downtown area. Um, we have Forest Park blocks away in the other direction. So there are a lot of opportunities for students to really immerse themselves in the culture in the United States. Um, you know, we have a, a lot of um, gatherings that take place on campus. Um, I mentioned that we're a Jesuit institution. So one of the things that we find very important is to, you know, not only improve ourselves, um, but to improve the community around us. Um, and so that's something that we really kind of take into, into account. Um, our graduate students take part in service opportunities. Um, you know, one of the things we're doing in the, the fall this year is called Junior Achievement. We're going to uh, work with local elementary and middle school students on business decision making. So it allows our students to kind of give back as the teachers. They, they you know, uh, te teach isn't maybe necessarily the right word, but work with uh, these students and help them through kind of some business decisions. And I think that's something that's real important about St. Louis University is again, that a lot of our students come here for that reason. It's not just to say, hey, I wanna make myself better. It's that I wanna make my greater community better. I wanna somehow make the world better. And it's idealistic, you know, to, to, to say, is that what people are thinking? It's, but that's what I see every day. That's what actually, you know, whenever I first started at SLU uh, part-time a long time ago now, um, that was one of the things that I was really excited about was seeing that in the students, that it was this idea of that, that we all do have the opportunity to make the world around us a better place. And I, I think that, you know, if you get enough people like that in into that one set space, you know, we have a, that, that one business school, um, you really start seeing a lot of innovation and ideas come about uh, how that can be done. And um, I think that that's something that that maybe you don't get as a takeaway again from maybe the pamphlets or, or anything um, that we really do have a lot of students who are looking to improve their community. And that's contagious, um, you know, and it's something that students build on. And, and gosh, I, I certainly hope take with them after they leave the university, because, you know, it's something we, we do want to see continue um, in our in our alumni. We want them, you know, working for the betterment of the community, too.